Welcome to the Show Me Casey Schools podcast, where we help families make well-informed decisions about their child's education. I'm your host for today, Nina Ward, and today I have Beth McCarthy with me, who is the Director of Community and Industry Partnership with Prep KC. Yes. Did I get that right? Yes, that is perfect. That's a really nice title, so I just want to make sure. (laughs) It's a lengthy title, so it's always a little complicated, but you did an excellent job. Nice work. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Absolutely. Happy to be here. So we hear a lot of buzzwords in the education space right now around real-world learning, industry-recognized credentials. Um, And so sometimes people know what that is and sometimes they don't. So today we kind of want to talk about what those things mean, what Mm -hmm. they mean for students and also like what they mean for families in our community. Um, And I really want to talk about the work that Prep KC does to support that real world learning um, and supporting students in their career exploration and things like that. Awesome. So could you tell me a little bit about Prep KC and the work you all do? Yep. So we are an education nonprofit. We support Kansas City school districts and charters that serve mostly students of color and students impacted by poverty. Um, And our goal is really making sure that every single student who leaves the high schools that we partner with leaves ready for success in whatever they choose to do next. And so maybe that's college, maybe that's career, but really making sure every student has a plan for after high school. Mm -hmm. And our core goal is making sure every single student leaves with what's called a market value asset. Um, And and as you hear about real world learning and industry recognized credentials, market value asset is another commonly used term that oftentimes people are like, what does that that mean? Yes, what exactly is that? Um, And so what a market value asset is, it includes industry recognized credentials, it includes college credit, internships, um, meaningful projects with workforce, Mm -hmm. all of those opportunities that we know our students need to really have value after high school. It's what industry partners say students really need to be doing to gain the skills they're looking for in, in their future workforce, essentially. So our goal is every single student has the opportunity to earn those market value assets and really get a jump start on their future career. Well, and I really like the idea of the different ways students can go about that, right? I think when I was in school, a lot of times you heard about, you know, college preparation and college credit, and that's great. Um, but I really appreciate that we've kind of evolved in understanding like that may not be everyone's route. And so what can they gain while they're still in school? So like you said, they're ready to hit the workforce once they graduate high school. Right. Yes. And I really think we've done students a disservice over the years, telling them all that they should just go to college and figure out when you get to college what you want to do. We try to sort of change that to say, help every student figure out what is the world of careers? What are you interested in? And what's Mm -hmm. the path you take to get there? Maybe it is direct to work after high school. Maybe it's a credential program. Maybe it's a two-year degree or a four-year degree. Mm -hmm. All of those lead to high-quality careers. And what we hear from industry partners is, Please don't send all kids to college. We don't need need them to go now. Yes, we need them now. Don't take on that debt if it's not needed to sort of get your first job. Right. Get your foot in the door with a career that you're interested in and find a a business partner who will actually pay for your post-secondary education, right? So it's not Mm -hmm. either or. Do I want to go direct to work or do I want to go to college? You can do both. It's really just figuring out what's the right path for you. That's enlightening. I appreciate you highlighting that because I do think sometimes we kind of like make a decision now. (laughs) Pick one. (laughs) Either you're going to get a certification or you're going to college and that's it. Right. You know, and there are different ways. There are different plans. And you like to your point, you can do both. I do think sometimes, though, traditionally, I know when I was in school, a lot of this conversation didn't really start until high school. Yes. And for me, honestly, a lot of it didn't start to like senior year. And it's like, so what do you want to do? And it's like, I don't know. I guess I'll be a nurse. I mean, that sounds cool. Maybe, you know, right. um, prep KC and the work you all doing, what is the target age that you really start to engage with students? Really K-12, because particularly for students who might not know people who went to college, who might not know people who have a career, it's not conversations that they're having at the dinner table. And so we mm-hmm. need to start really young with students, just helping them understand What is the world of careers? What are the kinds Mm -hmm. of things that you enjoy doing? How does that connect with future career? Does English and math really matter? Do I need to pay attention? Mm -hmm. All of those things, those conversations need to happen really early on 
so that students can sort of envision the world after high school and be excited about that and understand how school is relevant to their future. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't start to help make school relevant for students by about middle school, you see a lot of them check out. They don't see the purpose in paying attention in their classes because they don't see that future for themselves. Nobody's ever helped them see what it could be. Mm -hmm. So they check out of school. And once they sort of make that decision that they don't care about school, it's it's so hard to get them back in. Yeah. And we have lots of employers. They are banging down our door to talk to those graduating seniors. But you have to start that conversation so much earlier to get students aware and excited about the future career, right? They can't be excited about a job that they never knew existed. Right. So we need to sort of help get them excited about the jobs that we most need a future workforce in. Right. And interested in connecting their interests early on. Yeah. I think that's something that I've seen some students struggle with is trying to understand like, how does this interest I have apply to any sort of career? And so, and what does that look like? How do I find it? You know, I, I'm, I like to draw. What can I do? Oh, be an artist. Like there are <laughs> lots of different things actually that yes. you can do. Um, and some of that just exploring interests really all in really early on, I think, helps support with that also. Right. Yes. And that comes from just general conversations, just understanding what are lots of different careers that people do. There's mm-hmm. also lots of great tools that, that families can use, whether it's career interest inventories or there's a great platform, the Agilities um, yes. that the Ju- DeBruce Foundation does. So there are a lot of great resources that students can use to just sort of take those inventories to see how do the things that I'm interested in align with possible careers. Mm -hmm. And those inventories have come a long way in the last, say, 10 years. It used to be you would do those and they would tell you to be a social worker or an engineer, right? Right. I mean, you would get like three careers. I would say, do these things. Mm -hmm. They're no longer, the good ones aren't structured that way. It's really just helping to understand if you do like working with numbers and people, Here's mm-hmm. some broad career things to consider, not a specific job, because that's that's not what kids need. It's so interesting <laughs> that you say that, because uh, I'm remembering the ones that I took in school now, and I'm like, I like helping people. And be a nurse. Right. Yes. Yeah, not helpful. That, that's <laughs> it. Be a nurse. I went to one like intro nursing class, and I was like, oh, no, <laughs> this, is, this is not where I'm supposed to be. Right. That, that test was wrong. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's really helpful. So we're talking about reaching out, getting students exposed, K through 12. Can you talk a little bit more about how that may show up? So like what work is happening on the elementary level? Because some would say like, man, that's really early. Like what are y'all going in and doing with elementary students? Right. We're having really general conversations and, and things that people are familiar with, career days, right? Bring in lots of different speakers from all different backgrounds, some that have a college degree, some that don't, that work in lots of different fields have simple conversations, just go from classroom to classroom to say, here's what I do. Here's how I got into what I do. So Mm -hmm. it starts with those simple conversations at elementary school. We do a lot of just getting elementary students out to a campus visit, one to understand what post-secondary options exist. Maybe we'll take them to the Builders Association to see Mm -hmm. how do you get trained in the trades, to a community college, to a four-year degree, just so that they see college as an option if that's the path they want to pursue. Mm -hmm. Because oftentimes students feel like, well, if I don't know somebody who went to college and I don't think I can afford that, it's not an option for me. Right. So we want to sort of keep all options open to just sort of help them see what is that world and is it something they're interested in. So So that's what it looks like at elementary. Really starting with that exposure. Yes. Okay. Very simple conversation. So does it build as we get into like the middle school and high school years? Yes, it starts to get more purposeful in the middle school years to really start to align. So what are the things that you're interested in and how does that connect in particular to career pathways in high school? Most of the high schools that we work with are divided into pathways where about the ninth grade level, students are choosing to be a part of health and human services pathway or engineering and technology or business and finance. And so at middle school, we want them to start making connections between the things they're interested in, the Mm -hmm. kinds of careers that they sort of relate to, and what pathways exist at the high school that they can enroll in. And so getting much more purposeful, not that they need to choose, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? locked in. You're locked in forever. Oftentimes, families do feel like, how are you asking my ninth grader (laughs) to choose a pathway? Right. We're not asking them to choose what they want to do with their life. We're just saying, what are you interested in? 
so that they can make sort of learning more relevant. Why do you need English and healthcare? Why do you need math and engineer, right? They can mm -hmm. make those connections and help skills, help students gain the skills that they need um, in any field that they're going to go into. Because so much of what they need is just those transferable skills. It's really interesting. My daughter's in ninth grade and she's really interested in theater mm -hmm. and law. And I'm like, both feel transferable to me. Right. I can see. I it's can all see how that relates. right? Yes. I mean, you are sort of putting on a, a show in front of a courtroom or right. on a stage. Right. Yes, absolutely. So I think helping make that connection is great. Okay, well, we're going to take a short break here. Okay. And then when we come back, we'll kind of talk a little bit about the impact of the work that you're doing with Prep KC. Awesome. All right, and we are back with Beth from Prep KC, and we're talking a little bit about the work that they do. Um, Beth, I know earlier we kind of talked about how you all approach exposure for students and how those different programs kind of scale up from elementary to middle to high school. I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the impact of the work. Um, what would you say is the impact for the student of the work that you all are doing with Prep KC? I mean, as we look at the data, and we, we do a lot to sort of use data to drive practice to know sort of how we're doing as an organization. And as we look at the data, particularly on students that earn a market value asset, so those college credentials or industry recognized credentials, college credit, internships, those types of opportunities, um, about 54% of our students are earning a market value asset. And what we know is their future trajectory once they earn a market value asset, they're more likely to enroll in college. They're mm -hmm. more likely to persist in college because we know there's a huge issue in regard to students who enroll, but then sort of don't drop complain. out and don't persist. And right, that, that's the worst possible scenario. And so we know having those types of assets under your belt really do set you up for success and really help to improve your future trajectory. But we also know as you meet students who are engaged in these programs, whether they're earning a certified nursing assistant or a digital marketing credential, whether they're doing an internship with Kansas City Metro Bar Association, those kinds of opportunities, they are gaining those transferable skills. And you can mm -hmm. see that in them, the confidence that they bring to the table, the way yeah. they talk about what they're doing, the way they can communicate with others are just phenomenal skills that students are, are gaining through that. Um, and those are the things that really matter. We know right. state test scores is one thing um, right. that's not actually indicative of how that's well that's students it. are going to do that's after right. high school. We spend a ton of time focusing all our efforts on those state test scores, but really that, that's not what matters most to kids. And so we know that when they have these opportunities, they're just engaged in their education in a different way that, that we mm -hmm. don't see without them. So um, I think they are thriving in ways that surprise even their teachers sometimes what yeah. they're capable of. That's awesome. So we know the impact for student. And I think that was a great breakdown of kind of what we could see firsthand on how students respond to the work. What would you say is the impact to our community? Because I think that's a piece that sometimes we miss. Um, which is, you know, we want to be focused on our child and what they're doing and their personal success. But also, I think it's important just to highlight like what it means for our community as a whole when we invest in our students this way. Right. Yes, I think, I mean, what this is all about is really workforce preparation, right? We hear from so many different businesses. They are struggling to find their future workforce. They don't know where they are. Mm -hmm. There is a huge amount of creativity, drive, talent in the communities that we serve. And so what we know is if we can really cultivate that and help them reach their full potential, our community as a whole will really thrive. We will have the future workforce that we will need. We will really be able to thrive as a region, um, if we can really make sure that all of our communities have access to the kinds of opportunities that we can create. Because sometimes without purposeful opportunities and connections, those don't exist for students who are growing up in, in communities impacted by poverty. Those exist for, for our suburban students, That's but right. we need to make sure every single student has access to that to close those opportunity gaps and make sure we really are doing this in equitable ways that, that raises the tide for all of our community. 
That's a really good point, um, because I think sometimes one thing that makes some people in the community nervous about this sort of work is, are we pushing certain students to certain career paths, right? Like, are we exposing everything to students and giving them options, or are we kind of shuffling people to industries and career paths based on what we think they could do and kind of limiting them? Right. Yes. And I think what we're doing is we're empowering students. We're giving them the choice, right? When you help them have exposure to here's all of the different opportunities, what are you excited about? And what's the path that you can take to get there? Because even within a particular career, there's lots of different ways that you can get into that career. So it's really empowering students to say, this is your decision. Here's all the things that you can choose from. But I do, we can fall into that sort of trap of particularly when we talk about not all students should go to college, right? Not all all kids need to. That doesn't mean that I, as the adult, am going to say, you're college material and you're you're not not such college material, right? It's Mm -hmm. not our choice. It's really helping them figure out where do they want to get to and and how do we help them get there as opposed to saying, I'm not Uh, sure you're over here. that's That's not our choice. That's the student's choice. That's awesome. Okay. So... I am so excited about the work you're doing. My wheels were turning when you were talking about career day. I'm like, oh my God, I would love to do that. But I'm the size of a fourth grader, so I'm not sure how that would how <laughs> that would, would go off. It Maybe if we get a little step stool and I can step up and talk to the students. But for those that want to get involved in your work, yep. um, community members, things like that, how should they get connected to Prep KC? One, you can see all about our work on our LinkedIn page. We regularly sort of post where we need volunteers and how to get involved with Prep Casey. But the key things that we're really looking for, one, is just to show up for kids. Come to a career day. It is very simple. Show up, talk about your career, connect with students in real ways to really talk about how did I get into this? What were the challenges that I encountered? How did I overcome those challenges? Mm -hmm. So just having those simple conversations is typically where it starts for our volunteers. Mm -hmm. Um, We love to engage our partners, both business and post-secondary, to get students out to see a day in the life, right? So as students start to say, gosh, I'm interested in a career in architecture, let's get them out to an architecture firm and see- Right, yes, absolutely. See what is a day in the life of this type of field like? Mm -hmm. And who all works in an architecture firm? Because oftentimes when we do workplace visits, students think everybody in in an architecture firm is an architect. It's like, oh, no, no, no. It's a lot to this. Right. (laughs) Yes, there's so much to it. So coming to talk to kids in schools, we have lots of just one-time events. People can show up. We engage with our partners to really design engaging workplace visits. Um, We also need more people. I mentioned on our LinkedIn page. We need more people to post opportunities for students because what we're looking to do is create a Prep KC alumni LinkedIn group where okay. every single one of our seniors, and we have about 3,800 seniors wow. who graduate from our partner schools every year, um, we're inviting them to be a part of a Prep KC alumni page for the first time. So there's no students on there yet, but this mm-hmm. is our goal. Um, and we want business partners to post opportunities. Do you have an internship? Do you have an entry level job? Do you have a way for them to network with people in this field? That's great. Because we can create these connections and networks for them while they're in the K-12 space. But once they graduate, we have no connection to them right. and they most need that network because they don't have access to that type of right. network when they are ready to get an internship. Who do I go to? Who do I ask? Yes. They don't have those connections. So we need simple ways for them to be able to tie back into that network. And so we want everybody to sort of post what they have available for students so we can help make those connections even after they've graduated when they most need it. Yeah. So we'll be sure to include the website for Prep KC and also the link for LinkedIn so awesome. our listeners can get connected that way. Before we go, though, I do want to hear your thoughts on how families can support the work that you're doing. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's so important. Just have the conversation with your student, even if you have no idea what this world is, right? Ask them the kinds of things that they're learning. Ask them the kinds of things that they're interested in. Mm -hmm. Help have that conversation at the dinner table to sort of see they need a lot of just sort of advice and guidance. And even if you're not somebody who's in a career engaging in that conversation, reach out to the school to ask what resources are you providing to my student as well, (laughs) making sure to advocate for your child to say, where do you have opportunities for them to earn a credential, to do an internship, and what can I do as a parent to support them in getting there? So reaching out to the school to understand what are the opportunities that your school has 
that your student has access to? Because oftentimes that's not getting out to all students and all families, right? right? It's if you're in a particular class, maybe you hear about it from a teacher. It's not always getting out. So if families reach out to their schools to say, where are are their market value asset opportunities? What career pathways does my student have access to? What exploration days can they be participating in and make sure they plug in? Because I know working with educators, just getting permission slips back from students is oftentimes an obstacle. So make sure, pay attention and and help connect your student with with those opportunities that exist at their school. That's great. Well, Beth, thank you so much for meeting with me today. I really hope that this helps families and community members, one, understand a little bit more about what's happening at Prep KC, but also how they can get involved in the work, be it with their students or within the community as a whole. So I want to thank you and thank you for the work that you all are doing at Prep KC. That is a wrap for this episode. We want to thank our listeners for tuning in and invite you to stay connected with Show Me KC Schools. Until next time. Show Me KC Schools is committed to providing you with vital information that supports you while you support your child on their educational journey. Connect with us on social media at SMKCS and on YouTube at Show Me KC Schools and on all your favorite podcast platforms.